Yes, this is the new Toyota Prius. It looks great, but that's just the start. It has the windshield rake of a Lamborghini, a voice-based interface system similar to luxury German brands, and the fuel economy of a Toyota Prius, because it is a Prius, the new 2023 model, the fifth generation. It's as good looking as the outgoing version was awkward. The fifth generation Prius is not just about design. Overall, it's a much better vehicle. It's more powerful, it's more efficient, it has better tech. It goes from being a punchline to a pretty desirable vehicle. I'm at a manufacturer's event outside of San Diego, California for a full debrief on all that's new. This is not a skin deep review. For a car with such an iconic role in the Toyota lineup, we knew we had to make a statement. And I'd say that our design and engineering teams, well, they definitely delivered. True, considering the damage Gen 4 did to eyeballs, this needed to be a grand slam to keep the Prius branding relevant since it's not available as a pure EV. Pricing? The LE grade will start at $27,450, and the XLE will start at $30,895. And for those who want everything that Prius has to offer, the top trim limited grade with all-wheel drive will be very well equipped at $35,865. There's so much to get to. For starters, a guest star. All right, special treat. Ryan Douthit is my co-pilot. Hi there. How's everybody doing today? Let's do this. Let's hit the basics first. Truly all new, it's built on the TNGAC platform. The roof is two inches lower. Width and length are up by about one. Wheelbase longer by two. More attractive to the eye, it's less so to the wind. Aero efficiency drops a skosh. All three trims can be had with all-wheel drive, a bargain at $1,400. Prius Prime, arriving in the summer of 2023, should have more than the current model's 25 miles of all-electric range. The four-cylinder is a larger two-liter running the Atkinson cycle, plus there's a torquier electric drive motor that's up some 20% from 120 to 152 pound-feet. Net horsepower is up a whopping 60%. Total for the system is 194 horses for front drivers. Toyota doesn't offer total torque figures. It rises a couple to 196 HP for all-wheel drive powertrains. Interesting, considering that the motor that drives the back tires gets a substantial boost to 40 horsepower. The old one was seven. The lithium-ion battery with 14% more output is under here. Generally, it's silent running on start. The engine might fire up in colder conditions. The eCVT has no kind of synthetic shift points and there are no steering wheel paddles to adjust regeneration drag. That's done here. I've always found EV mode that offers short, low-speed electric travel to be kind of useless. Drive modes adjust steering weight and throttle mapping subtly. There's no head-up display. The gauge cluster is up high enough to keep eyes on the road. Ryan and I snagged the top trim all-wheel drive limited in optional wind chill pearl. Its Toyota rated efficiency is the lowest due to extra weight and 19 inch alloys. Still, 49 MPG average is impressive. The fuel sipper is the front drive LE rolling on 17 inches at 57 miles per gallon. The volume model XLE scores 52. So Prius still does Prius efficiency things and owners can hypermile without a paper bag over their heads now. Plus with all wheel drive, it sprints to 60 miles an hour in seven seconds flat, nearly three seconds quicker. One of the things I was wondering about when I saw the pictures of this mm -hmm. was how visibility would be with this A-pillar since it's really raked back. Um, it's not bad. Um, it does kind of block your view. But... Yeah, they pack so much into these modern vehicles with all the electronics and then the airbags and all that stuff. These just aren't thin anymore. Yeah. And so when you have this raking, you get this visual like block in front of you. However, they do have this nice little glass piece down here. Yeah. So at least it doesn't go A pillar to wing mirror immediately. You yeah. have that little gap, which kind of makes it at least feel like you can see what's going yeah. on there. The vanity in me really appreciates the new exterior design. I feel a lot better about driving this car. The old one was just so 
ugly. It was. It was hideous. It was the proportions were wrong. I mean, it might have been like you know the CD was better than even this vehicle. Yeah. Actually, made this one is has a little bit more wind resistance, but I think that that is worth it. You don't drive around with your head, you know, behind the steering wheel as low as you can go. Yeah. Uh, because you don't want to be seen in it. <laughs> I also think it's interesting that the folks at the event this morning. Mm -hmm kind of admitted it. They did. You know? <laughs> like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. takes a lot. Like, a car has to be really ugly for the manufacturer to even agree ever yeah. that it was maybe not the best design they've mm -hmm. ever done. <laughs> All right, putting my foot hard into the throttle. There's a little bit of that rubber bandy dynamic, but yeah. it's not bad. No. So we haven't hit any freeway yet, but at 55 miles an hour, um, you can tell by the audio quality. Mm -hmm. This is a fairly quiet car. Yeah. It's not a Lexus. It's not meant to be. Nope. I can hear a little bit of wind noise up in the front, I think, or is that tire noise? Is that... It might be tire noise. That's tire noise, yeah, because this is on the 19-inch uh, wheels. Yeah, if you get the LE, you get the 17-inch wheels. Um, which actually provides better economy than the 19s. Yeah. That's part of the reason why the higher end trims have less economy. It's 49 MPG. Though. I know. I mean, <laughs> it come on. Complaints. It's like I would live with less economy to get a more satisfying car and better features. So the LE with 17 inch wheels? Yeah. 57 city, 56 highway. Okay. All right. So that's <laughs> 8 MPG. I would go for the more opulent car, though. Yeah, that's also front-wheel drive, too. That is yeah. the absolute best Prius you can get. And, and <laughs> yeah, it's less economical, mm -hmm. but it's a lot more satisfying. I think as you get older, as we are, Tom, um, Me? little amenities like seat heaters, seat coolers, you know, cars that are a little bit quieter, you know, it's just these kind of things. When you're in your 20s and 30s, you're like, oh, it'll be fine. But the... Um, yeah, as you get older, you're like, no, I'm not putting up with that. So even though this loaded one is mid-30s, you don't have to spend that much money to get, you know, this kind of economy um, yeah. and these kind of looks. Yeah. It's a great look. Mm -hmm. This road that we're on is kind of windy and got to say, this handles pretty well. Yeah. Um, also, there's a really nice weight to the steering. Um, it's just about perfect. Not something I would normally think about <laughs> when I think about Prius. Never. I know we keep going back to that. It's like, I can't believe this is a Prius, but it's yeah. true, you know? <laughs> I mean, Toyota is trying to up their game there. Yeah, didn't Akio Toyota say that um, he wanted like performance across the board? Right. Everything needed to handle well now. You know, no more dialing it in and saying, well, you know, economy's great. That's all you need. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They they are trying to sharpen things up a bit, and and it shows. Yeah. Generation five has excellent brake feel, smoothly transitioning from regenerative to the physical brakes, which are slightly larger now. Visibility is generally good forward and to the side, uh, to the rear, it's kind of a slit. Thankfully, there's the improved Toyota Safety Sense three ADAS system. I'll let the Toyota folks take that. Blind spot monitor and rear cross traffic alert is standard on all grades. In addition to these features, Prius will have lane change assist and front cross traffic alert. Lane change assist works with lane tracing assist and operates when the dynamic radar cruise control is operating. When driver partially engages the turn signal, the vehicle monitor determines there are no vehicles in the path of the lane change. The system provides steering support into the new lane. Now driver's hands must remain on the steering wheel. Front cross traffic alert uses vehicle front corner radar sensors to alert the driver with visual and audible alerts about vehicles approaching from the side at an intersection. Allow me to heap more praise on Prius. It looks better in here. Materials are more appealing to eyes and fingers. This iridescent LED lighting distracts from faux carbon fiber. Now for comparison, here's the outgoing cabin. <laughs> See what I mean? I hear from smaller journalists that this extreme rake makes entry a little less convenient and visibility-wise, the A-pillar bothered Ryan more than me. That's what test drives are for. 
Headroom is reduced about an inch and a half front and back. Interior space is down by two cubic feet. Limited models get heated and vented seats that Toyota claims are redesigned for better support. They're covered in soft tex material. Leather is not a thing in Prius. Same goes for this, which is heated. Visually, it's kind of heavy with lots of buttons. The driver's looking at a lot of dashboards since it's deep to accommodate the dramatic glass. The climate is single zone. There are the usual places to stash things. Many of them are on the small side. The new multimedia interface is so much better than the outgoing one. It doesn't really have a home screen. It relies a lot on natural voice prompts like, Hey Toyota, I need directions to In-N-Out Burger. I found 15 results. The first is In-N-Out Burger at Calle Magdalena. Would you like to go to that one? Yes. And can you explain why their fries are so awful? Apparently not. So you do need a data plan with this. There's an initial trial, but after that, there's a monthly fee. Originally, I thought that this was the Qi charge pad and was going to grouse about the poor ergonomics, but then realized the charger is here and extremely well done. On top of that, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are wireless. Phone as key is optional on XLE. Prius can be had with a self-parking feature and a digital rear view mirror. Generation 4 had a rear wiper. Uh, that's gone now, sadly. There are a number of Easter eggs, and Toyota isn't being dramatic with Reborn. It really is. The only busy part of the design is this. Uh, better than the CHR, though. Uber riders will find the release pad has little travel and feels firm. A quick check in the back seat. I'm five foot nine, and even though the roof slopes back, I've got that much headroom. That's not bad. Knee, leg, and foot room are generous. The cushions are high enough so that I've got thigh support. The door openings are a little on the small side if you're getting car seats in and out often. Door pockets, those are pretty small. No adjustable vents or separate climate zone. At least I can charge my phone. No pocket on this side, my evil twin brother would not like that. Um, oh, an umbrella. Feel right at home. This is the limited. Heated seats are an option on this model. The bench is wide enough, so you could put three adults back here for short trips across town, but uh, I would keep it to two. That way you can have a cup of coffee or a refreshing beverage. Analyzing the new sheet metal, the cabin is pushed back from the nose. The windshield flows directly into the hood with only a slight angle change. I talked to the chief engineer about the unusually clean looking front end, I mean for Toyota, and he confirmed this is a styling language for the brand going forward. Thank the design gods. The Synergy Drive badge is replaced by the new Beyond Zero Dot. No more blue glow inside the logo either that signaled hybrid powertrains. Kind of a Lexus thing happening with the lettering here. The kick in the lower flanks streams into the rear fascia cut line for harmony. It all flows nicely. Uh, Generation 4 had none of that. Need a reminder of that riot of randomness? Well, here you go. I find no glee in calling someone's baby ugly. I'm just truly perplexed how it made it past the first consumer clinics. As always on events, no TP trunk test. I just don't have the time. Plus it's 6.45 in the morning. I don't think they're open. Only Limited gets a powered lift gate. It's not kicked to open. It and XLE models get this divider that eats into cargo room. No, it's not cheap styrofoam. No spare tire, just a repair kit. It's easy to mold bag hooks into here. I wish there were some. Dropping the seats without going to the back door isn't a stretch. As far as cubic feet go, I'll guesstimate the top models have around 45 of them to fill in this configuration. Notice the floor is nice and flat. Seats up, it's just over 20 cubes, nearly 24 for the base LE. So ultimately, it's an average of three cubic feet smaller now. Personally, I find that a small price to pay for the Svelte looks. The utility should be serviceable for everyday use. And the security cover is easy to stash when not needed. My time with Prius was short, but let's do red light, green light. Green light, the design is a win. Nothing more to say there. Toyota gave the interior team a better budget to work with. 
Efficiency can be best in class, a critical bragging right for Prius. Every part of the driving experience is better. Give the engineers a raise. Yellow light. The SWEP styling comes with a bump in price. The new Toyota interface is vastly improved, but will require a monthly subscription fee after a year. There's improved safety tech uh, that should help with poor rearward visibility. Red light. For some, the styling will impact entry, exit, headroom, and visibility. Cargo room is down too. Toyota continues to drag its feet when it comes to full electrification, but that's a separate issue. There is the baggage of the outgoing model, but once people see this in person, the frumpy reputation should melt away. If it weren't such a valuable nameplate, Toyota could have easily called this something else. So I don't know about you, but um, much better looking, better handling, better performance, better efficiency. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a win for me. Yeah. And also better infotainment. It's a much better vehicle. Mm -hmm. And you won't be embarrassed to be seen in it. <laughs> Fugly no more, the fifth generation Prius is a huge leap forward and in many ways the best vehicle Toyota makes. When it hits the market in January of 2023, it'll turn heads and perceptions. Normally, I interface with a number of people in parking lots and such, then gauge the reaction of a new model. This trip, I was seriously pressed for time, but the few that did check it out had a strong reaction along the lines of, that's a Prius? Once again, special thanks to Ryan Douthit from Driving Sports TV. Um, we should really do this again. Yeah, I think we should. Let's do it up in Washington State. Yes. You yeah. can come out to my off-road course. That would be great. <laughs> that would be great. And watch his channel. He does good work. <laughs> you do good work too, Tom. I try. <laughs> A reminder that I attended this event courtesy of Toyota. It paid for my travel, hotel room, and fed me good food. But you know I'm a straight shooter with you, right? Right. Well, that's your first look at the all-new 2023 Toyota Prius. Before I go, let me address something. There are people out there that feel like this should have been an all-electric vehicle. I highly disagree. Prius equals hybrid. That is marketing gold. Automakers dream of that kind of branding. If Toyota is going to do a pure EV, it needs to come up with another nameplate. And I don't think that BZ4X is that, okay? It's just kind of cumbersome. And I did talk to the product planner. He said that there was some thought of turning this into an electric vehicle, and then they decided against it. I think that's wise. Thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe to this channel, click notifications, follow me on social media, and if you have a question, leave it in the comments. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.